Hello, welcome to this video where we introduce officially the derivative. We've been hinting at it. We spent a, a series of videos just looking at uh, calculating the slope of the tangent line, but by guessing. And now we want to be able to make the process precise. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you uh, through this journey. Uh, let's get started. So um, in the last set of videos, we looked at the limit of the slopes of the secant line slopes. Uh, limits of the slopes of the secant lines being equal to the slope of the tangent line. We had these two drawings here. We had a nice animation. Uh, the bottom was actually um, done by an animation. Um, and so the blue lines are secant line slopes. The red line is a tangent line slope. And the gap between them closes in. The x equals a is a solid stationary point. The x um, on the other side there on the right, it could be on the left too, um, is is, is approaching the A, the X is approaching the A, and what's happening at the bottom is like a static drawing of the animation that we had from before. The point Q is the evaluation of the function at X, and the gap between X and A is getting closer and closer. And we um, spent time talking about limits. We went all the way through, talked about limits at infinity. Now we're gonna use this limit um, we, to calculate the slope of the tangent line. So we have f of x minus f of a, the difference in the y's, divided by x minus a, the difference in the x's. That'll be the slope of the blue line. And we are taking the limit as x goes to a. And it could be from either side, but in this picture we have x approaching a from the right-hand side. All right, so the f of x minus f of a is the secant line slope, and the limit of the secant line slopes is the tangent line slope. The symbol that we use is a prime symbol. We'll use another notation later. But um, yeah, this will be the slope of the tangent line, and we'll find out why we care about it. Um, so it's all coming. This is the formula that we need. At first, we're going to find out also that there's a better formula. Okay, but uh, let's execute this formula on an example. Get the better formula and execute that same formula on that example. All right, so here we have uh, this calculation for uh, the derivative at a known x value, x equals a. Okay. All right, great. So our function is going to be 2x cubed minus 5x. The point that we're interested in is when x is negative 1 and y is equal to 3. You plug a negative 1 in there, you should get a 3 out. And so um, we want to find the limit as x goes to negative 1, f of x minus f of negative 1, all over x minus that negative 1. So we put our f of x function in there. Uh, negative 1 has already been plugged in. We get a 3 out of that. So the value of a is negative 1. The value of um, f of a then is a 3. And so we get our function 2x cubed minus 5x. We take away 3 from that and we divide by x plus 1. This should be the limit. This limit will represent the slope of the tangent line. We can take it further and find the equation of the tangent line. Just a little bit of algebra after the fact. And so Evaluate this limit, and we have in our hands the actual tangent line slope. What are we looking at? A cubic divided by a, a linear term. It's a limit. We just try to plug in that a, a value. If you plug a negative 1 in the numerator, you get a 0. In the denominator, you get a 0. But also in the numerator, you get a 0. And so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out that when the numerator and the denominator are both 0, perhaps we could factor and then cancel. And so knowing that negative 1 is a root of the numerator can then help us to be able to figure out how to factor it. It, it has to have a factor of x plus 1. The whole purpose behind it being 0 when you plug a negative 1 in means it has a factor of x plus 1. To do synthetic division, you take that root, negative 1, all the coefficients. If you have a missing coefficient, you have to throw in a 0 for that. And we have to find out the quadratic that's multiplied by the factor of x plus 1. And this process is a shortcut to help you find it. It's called synthetic division. Copy down the first coefficient. Anytime you get something that's underneath the line, that's where you're going to multiply by the root. And put it in the next spot um, up and to the right on the diagonal. So 1 times negative 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. Add vertically, get a negative 2. Times that negative 1 is a 2. Add vertically, get a negative 3 times that negative one is a three. You know you've done it right. This should be a zero. It's a root. And what we get then is the 
quadratic term, the x term and the constant, we now know how to factor that cubic. It factors as the x plus one factor and then this quadratic, two x squared minus two x minus three. Uh, perhaps that factors further, perhaps it doesn't, but um, the issue is that we need to cancel the x plus one in the denominator. Now we can. And in doing that, we're left with just the, the, uh, the quadratic and we can just plug a negative one into that. Square it, we get a one, double it, we get a two, add on two, that's a four, take away three, it's a one. The slope of the tangent line to this function at x equals negative one is m being equal to one. We have the m, we have the point, negative one, three. These two things we can put together and find the equation of the line. We know it's slope, we'll get, we'll get a visual in a second. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be um, the fact that x is negative one and y is three, then we can figure out then what b is in the standard y equals mx plus b format. So a three is equal to negative one times one plus b. So you add that guy over and find out b is four. And you have your equation of your tangent line. You can graph your cubic and your tangent line and all on the same graph and this is what you would get. Good job. A little bit of trouble with the whole factoring of the cubic. And so we have an alternative way that would work better and then would lend itself to be able to be adapted to move to any a value. This is good for a negative one, great. Uh, the next formula that we get will be good for negative one and then it'll be more expandable. I should be able to find a formula that can give me the tangent line slope when I plug in the a value. And that's where we're going to be headed to. This one doesn't le uh, lend itself to that too well, but the next one will. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a similar formula. It's just changing um, the names. Instead of having x approach a, we're going to have some distance between the two be called h. And that distance between them is, is going to zero. One stands uh, stationary, the other one's moving towards it. And so the distance between them is going to zero. So we're going to have the limit as h goes to zero. We still have an a, the point of tangency that we want to start at, and then plus the h gives us the other one. So f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, and we're taking the limit as h goes to zero. Okay, this will lend itself to have the ability for us to be able to calculate a formula that'll help us no matter what a is. Okay, so this, this is really the go-to formula. The other one's good. Okay, it works, and you can use it if you want. This one works better and is more adaptable. But yes, this is still the secant line slope, and then we still have the limit of those secant line slopes still being the tangent line slope at that point. Okay, let's go back to that same example and work it for a being equal to negative 1 and, and the function, which was 2x cubed minus 5x. So... We have um, the value of a is negative one, so f of negative one plus h minus f of negative one. It's all divided by h, and we're taking the limit as h goes to zero. Okay, replace the x with a negative one plus h. So two times the negative one plus h who's cubed, minus five times the negative one plus h. Okay. That's the first part of the numerator. We already know what f of negative 1 is. f of negative 1 is a 3. So we already know the second part of the numerator. This is the hardest part right here. If we can just figure this out just by expanding, it's not like we have to factor. And so expand. Take negative 1 plus h and cube it. You can't just cube each one of them. You can't just take the negative 1 and cube it and take the h and cube it. It doesn't work that way. a plus b quantity cubed is not a cubed plus b cubed. We're going to have to actually have three copies all multiplied out. Um, here's one way to do it. Take them two at a time. So take the first two, negative one plus h times a negative one plus h, giving us that quadratic. And then you have the third one. And a nice way to visually multiply the third one is to have this table where we have the maybe the cubic, uh, the quadratic on the rows and the binomial on the on the column headers. Anytime two rows and columns intersect, we multiply. And it's good for collecting the terms nicely. So we have a negative one. Then we have the, uh, the 2h and the h gives us 3h. We have the negative h and a negative 2h squared gives us negative 3h squared. And then the h cubed. And so it works out nicely. It's a nice little tool. Students teach me tools all the time that they learned. And it helps if you need it. Okay. And so um, we have then uh, this is going to be the replacement. Still needs to be doubled. Okay. 
uh, but this 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 cubic here hq minus 3x h squared plus 3h minus 1 is going to be the guy who we double 2hq minus 6h squared plus 6h minus 1 you know you've done it right when you go to um, also apply the the, uh, the the negative 5 across and get the plus 5 and the minus 5h you know you're doing it right when you go and then put in the uh, oh, sorry cover it up here the uh, the f of negative 1 is 3 the point when when a is negative 1 f of a is equal to 3 so we're going to subtract 3 from this which is beautiful the, the negative 2 plus the 5 gives you a positive 3 we subtract 3 um, and then those parts cancel out. The clue that you're doing it right is that the, the, the terms that are left all have H in them. The goal is to cancel the H from the denominator. And now that we could factor it out, we can cancel. Allowing us to automatically be able just to plug in H equals zero, giving us the same value of one. Okay, and this is the one that we can adapt to any value of X. All I need to do is replace the A with just, a, just an X and then I can, in the end, I'll have a formula, the derivative formula that I can plug in. Uh, that's going to be coming later, but but this is this is a more adaptable formula. They both work. We just did it two different ways, and you know, um, but this is the go-to way though. Okay, um, this video is getting a little bit too long. Let's go ahead and end it. We'll come back with some uh, why we care kind of uh, look at the concept of the derivative, and then we'll make our way to in another video actually being able to calculate the derivative as a function, or I can now move to a different point and get the tangent line slope there. And so, thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Uh, please like and subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you in the next video.